Throughout the course of history, men and women have lived and died. Looking back from this place in time, it is clear that people long ago really did some really dumb things. And in order to understand how they died, we must first understand how they lived. These are the stories of how they died. The name Pocahontas is a name that is known by almost everyone. Accounts of her life have been retold and repeated thousands of times over the last 400 years. The true story of her very short and powerful life has been buried in legend and myth and even transformed into a fairy tale. But how much of the legendary tale is true? The actual story is a tale much darker than what has been portrayed in the movies. The chronicle of her life involves kidnapping, conflict, starvation, betrayal, and a journey across the sea. Pocahontas was born around the year 1595 near what is now present-day Jamestown, Virginia. Her given name at birth was Amanut, and she went by the name Matoaka. As she grew, and because of her happy and curious nature, she earned the name Pocahontas, which means playful one. Pocahontas was the favorite daughter of Wahuseneca, the chief of the Powhatan. He was a most formidable and intelligent ruler. In fact, Chief Powhatan was the leader of more than 30 Algonquin tribes in and around the Chesapeake Bay area of Virginia. In order to understand Pocahontas and her importance, we must first understand what was happening during her place in history. In 1607, 13 years prior to the arrival of the Pilgrims at Plymouth, 104 English settlers who were financed by wealthy Londoners and with permission from King James I landed on the shores of Virginia in search of gold and other riches. One month after their arrival, the settlers were attacked by a band of Indians. Eleven settlers were injured, and two died as a result of the attack. Soon after, life in Jamestown would become extremely harsh. People in the colony were unprepared to survive in an unfamiliar land. They were surrounded by food, but were unable to efficiently hunt, fish, and harvest in order to support the colony. As winter set in, Things only got worse for the settlers. To the Palatin, the colonists were perceived to be perpetually starving and searching for food. It was the leader of the colony, John Smith, who traveled through the unexplored territory looking for food and hoping to trade with the Palatin for corn. During his search, John Smith was captured and taken to Chief Palatin. It was this event that, years later, after no one was able to dispute the story, John Smith wrote about how the beautiful daughter of the chief rescued him from execution. However, the truth of these events may have been misinterpreted by Smith. In fact, Pocahontas may not have even been present for such an event since she was only a young girl. Powhatan ended up releasing Smith after adopting him into the tribe as an honored son. Pocahontas was actually about 10 or 11 when she first became familiar with the colonists who settled in the area. She had become a frequent visitor to the settlement and she befriended and tutored John Smith. She taught him the language of her people and learned English in turn. Her very playful and curious nature made her beloved by the colonists, and she would frequently bring gifts of food to help relieve the struggling settlers. 
By the end of 1607, only 38 of the original 104 colonists remained at the fort in Jamestown. A supply ship with more settlers and supplies arrived, but most of the supplies were lost in a fire. John Smith was now the president of the colony, and he was the only one able to negotiate with the Palatine. Unfortunately, negotiations were failing because John Smith was unable to deliver what the tribe really wanted. The Palatine wanted English weaponry, such as guns, ammunition, and cannons. The Jamestown Charter, however, forbade the trade of weapons, and because John Smith could not deliver, personal relationships with the Palatine started to break down. Skirmishes were starting to happen frequently. As a result, John Smith was injured and had to travel home to England for treatment. After Smith sailed home to England in 1609, relationships between the settlers and the Palatine deteriorated even more. The English informed Pocahontas that John Smith had died, and her visits to the settlement came to an end. Over the next four years, things only got worse. The settlers had really worn out their welcome. The Indians were no longer bringing food as gifts or for trade. A supply ship brought more settlers and supplies, but it was caught up in a hurricane. And then the Indians attacked in an attempt to wipe out the remaining colonists. As fall became winter, Plague and starvation swept through the colony. The starving settlers were now forced to eat rats. They even boiled and ate their belts and shoes. And when those ran out, they turned to eating their dead for survival. By the end of winter, nearly 75% of the colonists were gone. In the spring of 1613, the natives were now involved in open warfare with the English settlers. Pocahontas was now 16 and considered a grown woman. As she was visiting with the nearby Patawomic tribe on the Potomac River, a new arrival to the colony, Sir Samuel Argall, conspired with the chief of the Patawomic to lure Pocahontas onto his ship in order to use her as leverage against her father so that he would release several English prisoners and return English weapons that were lost in the skirmishes. Palatin released the prisoners, but did not return the weapons. Pocahontas was kept prisoner aboard the ship for days until they reached the fort in Jamestown. Negotiations with the Palatin continued on for more than a year. During her time in captivity, Pocahontas was taught the ways of the English made over from an outdoorsy, deerskin-clad girl into a corset-wearing, indoor lady. She was converted to Christianity under the Church of England, baptized, and renamed Lady Rebecca. While she was held hostage in Jamestown, Pocahontas met a distinguished settler named John Rolfe. John Rolfe wrote to the Virginia governor Sir Thomas Dale, proclaiming his love for her and asking permission to marry. Chief Palatin possibly saw this as an opportunity to use matrimony to help end the warfare and foster a new peace with the settlers. The governor and the chief both granted their permission. Pocahontas and John Rolfe married in April of 1614. The marriage between Pocahontas and John Rolfe ushered in a time of peace between the Indians and the English. The couple settled down for a time and John Rolfe began experimenting with the farming and curing of tobacco. His experimentation paid off and changed the fortunes of the colony for the better. During this period, Pocahontas gave birth to a baby boy named Thomas. In the spring of 1616, Pocahontas, her husband, their one-year-old son Thomas, and a group of other Native Americans set sail for England. The Virginia Company saw Pocahontas as a way to publicize the colony 
and to secure support from King James I and other investors. Pocahontas was now on a mission of diplomacy. We don't know for sure what Pocahontas was thinking when she first set foot in England, but we do know that London at the time was crowded and dirty. The River Thames was full of garbage, and the sky was so full of smoke from coal fires that it blocked out the sun. Basically, London was a petri dish of germs. To Pocahontas, it must have seemed very uncivilized, and she may have understood why so many people wanted to move to Virginia. During her stay in London, Pocahontas was treated as a celebrity. She met King James I, attended royal festivities, and helped raise funds for the very people that kidnapped her. The people of England were able to see for themselves that the natives were not the heathen savages that were conveyed in stories. And most importantly, they could be converted to Christianity. After some time in London, while waiting for good sailing weather, Pocahontas developed a cough and was having trouble breathing. No one knew exactly what she was suffering from, but she was not getting any better, even after moving to a cleaner location in the English countryside. In March 1617, Pocahontas and John Rolfe prepared for their return journey to Virginia. They boarded a ship and began their sail down the River Thames. But before they could reach the sea, Pocahontas' ability to breathe got worse. The ship had to dock at the town of Gravesend to seek medical attention. Pocahontas died on March 21, 1617. She was only 21 years old. Her cause of death was never determined, but many assume that she may have caught one of the many rampant lung diseases in London. Her body was buried at St. George's Church in Gravesend. She was buried in a vault without a headstone or markings of any kind. So much for being a celebrity. Pocahontas' husband, John Rolfe, immediately set sail for Virginia, leaving their son Thomas in England to be raised by his brother Henry. Thomas Rolfe eventually would return to Virginia in 1635. By that time, his father had passed away. Through her son's bloodline, it is estimated that Pocahontas has more than 100,000 descendants. Pocahontas' life was cut short, but her life was powerful. The most important lesson that we can learn from the life of Pocahontas is one of extraordinary strength and courage in the face of extreme circumstances. She was so much braver and stronger than the fictionalized version that so many people around the world have come to know. Thank you so much for watching. If you would like to hear more stories of how they died, please help my channel grow by clicking that subscribe button and share this video with your friends. Be sure to turn on the notifications so you never miss a new story, and I will talk to you next time. Bye guys.